Hi everyone, my name is Momoko. I major in education in college. I like to draw and play piano and I love drinking coffee. When I started my college, I was looking for somewhere to work and I decided to work for Starbucks. You know, I felt strongly about Starbucks. As a high school student, I used to go out for a special beverage with my friend all the time. I loved customizing my drinks. It felt the best when I got a perfect cup of coffee made just for me. That's pretty much why I started working for Starbucks. I just wanted to help someone have a great time over a cup of their favorite coffee. But what I realized working there was this. There are not so many people who customize their drinks. It always goes like this. Hello, how may I help you? Oh, hi. I, I just want to get a cup of coffee. Sure thing. Do you like it hot or iced? Do you want some cream? Do you want it sweet? We also have whipped cream. Oh, and check this out. This flavored syrup, it's seasonal and it tastes really good. Would you like to try? And the customer pauses. I can see him thinking what can make his coffee the best for him. But the answer I always get after seconds of silence is, it's okay, I'll just get a cup of coffee. I hadn't given it that much thought, but this is sad, isn't it? Even though you've got a whole bunch of choices, you are unintentionally or maybe intentionally choosing an all right way, just like my customers usually end up having an all right coffee. What if you were making these safe decisions in your life too, and that is putting a limit on your life? What if you were choosing an all right way instead of fighting for the best life? From August 2017 to May 2018, I had a chance to study at LaGrange College, Georgia, in the United States as an exchange student. From the very first day to the last, I can honestly say that I had a time of my life. At the same time, the differences of the culture never failed to strike me throughout the entire year. Particularly, it was language. I had discovered that the way people see the word and understand it depends on the language they use. In other words, language shapes how people think. Have you ever been in a situation where people from abroad ask you to explain a word they saw on TV or something? Like, this word. My question is, can you explain? You know this word. You know how to use the word. You have used this word a lot, like every single day. But could you explain this word accurately and immediately to those who speak different languages? Well, I couldn't. There's just too much to explain, and a major part of this word's concept depends on us as Japanese. Every language has these kind of words that cannot be understood only by translating, and they are often confusing for the people who don't share the same culture. For me, this kind of culture shock word was this. It was on my first day that I went to the elementary school in the US that I met this word, deserve. I had gone to a neighborhood elementary school twice a week through my in Lagrange to help out the kids there. This word, deserve. I had to um, the neighborhood elementary school through my year in Lagrange to help out the kids there. At the time, I was having a hard time listening to the kids' English because they speak really fast. I knew I barely understood them. I was nervous. Like, I could easily imagine kids not welcoming and accepting me once they knew I didn't understand the language. In contrast, the kids were actually pretty excited to see me in their class. Remember when you were in elementary school? It's always nice to have someone new and young, you know? But I also had this fear that I was not enough for them to be that excited. And that fear actually limited me, and all I could do was to smile and nod every time kids came to talk to me. Then the teacher introduced me to the class. 
She introduced me saying, okay class, she's a new teacher. I believe she deserves the respect that every teacher deserves. Let me repeat that sentence. I believe she deserves the respect that every teacher deserves. That I didn't understand. It was not that I could not translate that sentence into Japanese. It was not about translation. It was her values and thoughts that I didn't get. This is probably what was going on in her mind. Even though I was not a well-experienced teacher, that didn't make me an inferior in front of all the kids who were excited to see me. Even though I didn't speak English as native speakers speak, I still deserve the kids' respect. Knowing that I deserve something actually expanded my limits. I didn't have to be nervous, I didn't have to be self-conscious, and I didn't have to back off. All the messages she had for me were summarized in this one word, deserve. Deserve. It is hard for me to find a word that means exactly the same in Japanese. But it will be this, if I were to find a Japanese word. People usually say that the kids in the US are much more active and cheerful, while Japanese ones are so shy and in their own shell. I believe it can be explained using this first concept. Let's just say that the teacher asks the class to think about a math problem for a few minutes. After that, she asks the class to share their findings. I've seen ja I've seen kids in the US never stop sharing, fighting even for the chances to share. And the Japanese kids, they are so self-conscious, quiet, like, I think I know, but I'm not sure. I don't know if anyone wants to share my opinions. Why does it happen? I believe that the kids in the US know that they deserve to be heard. They deserve to be understood. The process of thinking deserves to be evaluated. And the Japanese kids, a lot of them don't even know that their thoughts are good enough. Like me on my first day in elementary school. They probably don't know that everything that comes out from them deserves to be shared. Now, back in the beginning, what if your coffee is your life? And what if your choices of syrup and cream are your choices for you to learn? Do you still want your coffee all right, or do you want it very best? Do you want your life all right, or do you want it the very best? I am just a college student. I don't know many things. But what I do know is there is always so much more for you in this world to figure out so many chances for you to learn. Being a little more courageous and choosing them are as easy as adding syrup and cream in your coffee. For me, one of those chances was all the experiences I have shared. But you will never know when your chances come to you. So I want to encourage you today to say yes to every chance you have to educate yourself. You can never be over-educated. I can only share my story, but I hope it means something to every one of you. Thank you.